dancing of Zambia, proud and free, land of work and joy in unity, victors in the struggle for their right. We've won freedom's fight, all one, strong and free, Africa is our and blessed by God's good hand. Let us, O oh happy people, join us one. Brothers, under the sun, all oh one, strong and free. One land and one nation is our pride. Dignity and peace need some Minister, our guest of honor for this morning, Honorable Minister Ronald Kaumach Totela, Minister of Tourism and Arts. Thank you, sir, for finding time to be with us for this very important occasion. We recognize uh, the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, virtually, Morning PS. We recognize the senior government officials tuned in, logged in for this important event. Good morning. We recognize the chairperson of the Zambia Tourism Agency, Madam Dr. Tekla Nguenya, morning ma'am, the chief executive officer for the Zambia Tourism Agency, the chairperson, the Tourism Council of Zambia, our cooperating partners, our esteemed tourism private sector and other stakeholders present, our partners in the media, may I simply say, ladies and gentlemen, without prompting uh, what the other speakers will be saying. I'd like to invite immediately the Chief Executive Officer from the Zambia Tourism Agency to give his welcoming remarks and introduce the event we're having this morning. Mr. Chai Lassa. Thank you, Betsy. Uh, Honorable Minister, good morning. Um, the Honorable Minister of uh, the Ministry of Arts, Honorable Ronald K. Totella, the Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, uh, Dr. Auxilia Ponga, uh, Senior Government Officials, the Chairperson of the Zambia Tourism Agency, uh, Dr. Tekla Nguenya, the Chairperson of the Tourism Council of Zambia, um, the Cooperative partners present with us today, esteemed tourism private sector and other stakeholders, our partners from the media. Let me just say, ladies and gentlemen, Honorable Minister, my task this morning is very simple. My task is to welcome every one of you uh, who have made it uh, to, and to thank you for joining us for the official launch of the Zambia Tourism Sector COVID-19 Safety Protocols. In doing so, Honorable Minister, let me give a brief background of the process leading to the development of the COVID-19 Safety Protocols for the Zambia Tourism Sector. The initial task, initial task team included departments and statutory bodies in the Ministry of Tourism and Arts, which came up with a draft skeleton of the protocol 
which we are, we are later circulated for broader input and proposals from tourism private sector and from other stakeholders uh, from whom we got overwhelmed response in Further, Honorable Minister, the Zambia Tourism uh, Agency benchmarked the process of developing the protocols with other key destinations in the sub-region like South Africa and Kenya, and also ensured that the protocols being developed were properly aligned with the World Health Organization, WHO, and the UNWTO, and that uh, the, and, and, and aligned to the Ministry of Health, the Zambia Ministry of Health guidelines. The final draft of the protocols was then tabled for validation from our stakeholders and over 100 private and public sector participants and cooperating partners attended the virtual validation meeting, which was held on the 14th of July, 2020, and made substantial contributions to the protocols. Honorable Minister, apart from the formulation of the safety protocols, the Zambia Tourism Agency, the Immigration Department, and the Zambia Airports Corporation agreed to issue a joint communique that capsulated the guidelines outlining safety measures for handling international arrivals to Zambia. The joint communique has already been publicized and circulated to the traveling public uh, in Zambia and abroad. In order to, in order to give further validation to the tourism health protocols, the Zambia Tourism Agency has currently applied, Honorable Minister, for endorsement uh, of our protocols from the World Travel, the World Tourism and Travel Council, WTTC, to procure their safe travel destination stamp of approval. Honorable Minister, this uh, act of uh, procuring this stamp will further validate Zambia to the uh, tra travel industry as a safe destination to visit. Honorable Minister, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, this launch of our protocols today has attracted participation from various local and international partners who include the Center for Promotion of Imports from Development in countries, CBI, Prosperous Zambia, Zambian Missions Abroad, private sector, government ministries and statutory bodies, and local and international media and other tourism stakeholders. This webinar, Honorable Minister, is also being live streamed from the ZTA Facebook to a database of over 70,000 followers. This e-launch of the Zambia Tourism Sector Safety Protocols confirms that Destination Zambia has adapted to the challenge of doing business in the new normal by embracing technology to advance tourism growth in the country. Honorable Minister, with these few remarks, I now wish to call upon the chairperson of the Zambia Tourism Agency, Dr. Tekla Nguenya, to give her opening remarks. Thank you very much. The guest of honor, Honorable Ronald K. H. Totela, the Permanent Secretary, Dr. Auxilia Ponga, Senior Government Officials, the Board of Directors, Zambia Tourism Agency, the Chief Executive Officer, ZTR, the Heads of Tourism Associations, TCZ, HCAS, Cooperating Partners, Tourism Private Sector, Members of the press, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I thank you for joining us this morning to witness the launch of the COVID-19 safety protocols by the Minister of Tourism and Art, Honorable Ronald Chitotela. These protocols have been designed to safeguard the lives of the Zambian people 
and our international guests. Tourism is a significant economy player of the world's economy and the immediate shock of the, of the sector resulting to COVID-19 affected the broader economy. Governments the world over introduced extraordinary measures to combat the pandemic by restricting travel, business operations, social and business gathering, bring tourism economy to a complete halt. The country's international airports were reopened on the 25th of June, 2020 for business and tourism travel by His Excellency, the President, Dr. Edgar Lungu. For this reason, a number of measures were put in place to safeguard employees, employers, local and domestic tourists, as well as various stakeholders. Guests of honor, the Zambian government through the Ministry of Health has been instrumental in providing timely information on the progression of the pandemic and called to adopt the doing business in the new normal was, was echoed by His Excellency, the President of Republican of Zambia, Dr. Edgar Lungu, in his COVID national address. The Ministry of Tourism and Art through the Zambia Tourism Agency engaged various stakeholders to input into the development of safety protocols that spoke to the expectation of the sector. The safety protocols that will be launched by the Minister of Tourism and at Honorable Ronald Stotela are a true reflection of what the industry feels should be done to ensure lives are safeguarded and protected. Honorable Minister, the safety protocols being launched today will be applicable and implemented by all tourism enterprises across the country. These protocols will be subjected to regular reviews as the pandemic evolves. We urge and call upon the sector to fully cooperate and adhere to the procedures provided in the document. It is the duty of all stakeholders to co collaborate and ensure that the spread of the pandemic it is minimized across the country. Honorable Minister, with these few remarks, it is my honor to invite the Permanent Secretary to call upon you to deliver your keynote address. I thank you. I will ask uh, the Chairperson for the Zambia Tourism Agency to call upon the Minister the PS um, is having trouble to log into the meeting. The chairperson, ma'am. Thank you so much. So it's my honor to now call upon the Honorable Minister, Ronald Stotella, the Minister, sir. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. And uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let me begin by acknowledging the people that are present here. And my permanent secretary, Dr. Auxilia Ponga. <laughs> the officials that are present this morning at this important function. The chairperson, Zambia Tourism Agents, Dr. Tekrangwenya. The chief executive officer, Mr. Chaire, Zambia Tourism Agents. The chairperson, the Tourism Council of Zambia, Mr. Mpaya, the cooperating partners that are joining us Richard, this morning, esteemed private sector in the tourism industry and other stakeholders. Our, our, all the partners that are with us this morning, online and physically, my friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen, let me say good morning once again. It is a very, a wonderful moment 
this day today for me to welcome you to the launch of the COVID-19 safety protocol for the Zambia tourism sector. These protocols have been developed to assure the safety and to ensure that the business continuity is sustained in the tourism industry. As we all know that the tourism economy has been severely hit by the coronavirus known as the COVID-19 pandemic and the countries of the world have, have been put on the measures to contain its further spread and Zambia is not an exception. These, uh, there is still no vaccine yet to combat the COVID-19 pandemic, though the global village is doing everything possible and the efforts are underway. Consequently, the most global destinations have provided guidelines on how to live with the COVID-19 under the new normal due to the fact that the COVID-19 may not be going away anytime soon. Therefore, we need to prepare ourselves. The economic, the economic resilience of the tourism sector must be ready to live under the new normal and all the operators must prepare that indeed we, we have been severely tested by the COVID-19. However, I remain optimistic that the tourism will re-emerge from the calamities perhaps more easily than any other sector of the economy. Ladies and gentlemen, no sector in the world would ever had ever expected such a setback. Large and small businesses have been seriously affected and many have shut down operations and may never revive. As a Minister of Tourism, I am deeply saddened by the loss of business from the, from the tour operators and the tourism value chain. The tourism workers losing their jobs, others permanently, and others have been sent on post leave, including our men and women who are involved in craft works, the tour operators, the taxi drivers that have been driving our tours, and many more, all of whom are wondering where their next paycheck will come from. I want to assure you that your government, our government, under the able leadership of His Excellency Etika Chagwarungu, the President of the Republic of Zambia, is fully aware of the, de the devastation effects caused by the COVID-19, especially on small to medium enterprises who are the drivers of the economic development and job creation. The United Nations World Tourism Organization, UNWTO, estimates a global loss of our uh, 900 to 1.1 trillion international billion international tourist arrivals and an amount which is estimated between 910 million dollars to 1.1 trillion dollars in export revenues and about 100 120 million jobs to be lost depending on whether the borders are open in September or in December 2020. The United Nations World Tourism Organization, the UNWTO, projections reflect considerable uncertainty about the duration of the pandemic. Ladies and gentlemen, let me also, like any other, most of other global tourist destinations, Zambia's tourism sector has been thrown into a major crisis due to the pandemic. Despite this seemingly gloom picture, however, we should not despair. Hope still is there. We must not give up. We must not, we must not focus on how much we've lost, but we must now focus on how to revive the sector. Ladies and gentlemen, it is for this reason that I am very encouraged to note that the Zambian tourism agents, in partnership with the private sector in the tourism industry, 
other agencies and departments in my ministry and other stakeholders worked closely together to develop the protocols on health and safety of our, of our tourism destination. This is, recommend, this is commendable as, recommend, as it will head the, the self-reimaging of our tourism economy from the, de the devastation caused by the COVID-19. I want to commend you all for, the, for this momentous joint effort which led to the collective adoption of the protocols at the well-attended virtual stakeholders meeting as stated by the chief executive that was held in July of 2020. By adopting these protocols, you, you have all been taking responsibility to ensure that Destination Zambia is made safe for our business. Your collaboration efforts in developing the protocols concerning the COVID-19 safety protocols, which I am about to launch this morning, has given birth to the best safe plan for our tourism industry. It has sent a message to the local, regional, and the international market that they can trust our destination. The new health and safety protocols have incorporated guidelines provided by the World Health Organization and the, and the United Nations, the World the Tourism Organization, UNWTO. The new health and safety protocols are, are a critical priority in our service delivery. Ladies and gentlemen, developing a good document is usually easier than making sure that it is applied effectively to, to achieve intended outcome. Therefore, it is for this reason that I want to urge the Zambia Tourism Agents working with the private sector partners to ensure that objectives of the safety protocols as outlined in the document are achieved. And let's make sure that we achieve limiting the spread of COVID-19, the, the severe and for tourism business to protect both the staff and the customers. And we make sure that we harmonize the COVID-19 re response measures for the tourism sector in Zambia. Instill confidence in our potential customers that the tourism is safe and they can resume activities in Zambia. Audit and establish Zambia's new incurring capacity in the provision of various tourism services. Ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude, I must emphasize that domestic tourism is as the impetus for our sector recovery must be a priority in our marketing strategy by both ZTA and the tour operators in their business plan. I know that all of you are anxious to hear what incentives government will extend to the sector to help stimulate its recovery. Let me take this opportunity to reassure you that my ministry and the ministry responsible for treasure has concluded our engagement in terms of what responses that will be given. Therefore, I remain confident that some of the the support to the sector recovery will be announced before the end of this year. I need to emphasize that as His Excellency the President added to his address, the President of the Republic of Zambia, Mr. Edgar Chavalung, is keen to see that the sector is quickly placed on the path of recovery. I have been encouraged by the response the responsiveness of the domestic tourism market, which should be our focus as we await for full reopening of global tourism. I do know that since <coughs> the opening of the Victoria Falls by His Excellency the President, Dr. Edgar Chagwarung, President of Republic of Zambia, in May 2020, up to over 27,000 people have visited Victoria Falls to date. 
this development of increasing local and domestic tourism in our country gives me hope that the tourism sector will recover and surpass other economic activities or other economic sectors in our republic. Our responsibility, therefore, will be to ensure that as we recover and grow, we increase our marketing efforts to the domestic market and followed by the region market, then later international activities. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, in conclusion, okay. allow me to encourage the tour operators to remain business oriented and look at ways of pushing domestic activities, especially as we enter the first period. I do know that we can easily leverage on our domestic market by offering rates that are more appealing to the Zambian market. I would want also to emphasize that I'm looking forward to family weekend packages designed for the Zambian family so that we can encourage our citizens to start exploring and, and appreciating our local market. The, um, uh, these are going to help the Zambia tourism agents to actively engage the private sector to promote the facility to the local market. As you may be aware that once any activity is fully owned and appreciated by the local people, it becomes easier for us to market. Let me conclude by saying I wish you all a safe period as we transcend towards the first period. And the, I want to encourage you to observe the safety protocols that we are launching today. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless Zambia. And God bless the tourism sector. I am a tourist. Are you? Thank you. Okay. It's now my pleasure and honor to launch the proto the the safety the tourism sector COVID nineteen safety protocol. And I wish that this be distributed both online and physical copies to all our agents and all our public institutions so that our people will be able to see. And thank you so much. Thank you, Honorable Minister, for your very well noted speech. I'd like to invite members from the media who we'll only give up to three questions to ask our minister concerning the speech that he has just delivered. You can introduce yourself, where you're coming from, and uh, you may ask the Honorable Minister the question. Thank you. Good morning, Honorable, and Chimyangando from Diamond TV. My needs on uh, the call that uh, you've made, I think uh, this is not the first time that we are hearing over that call for uh, the promotion of uh, local tourism. Just uh, from um, the time that you've been under the ministry, I'd want to find out maybe the response that uh, has been there from uh, local tourists to ensure that uh, they also take part in as far as um, enriching the sector is concerned. Thank you, Nchimunya. I want to glad you that state that you, from the time we started promoting domestic tourism, there has been a growing desire by Zambians to visit their, uh, their uh, the tourism site. And this could be confirmed by the different packages by the tour operators that we have crafted for our domestic market. And going forward, I want to preempt and state that I intend to engage His Excellency the President to declare probably a, a Chitenge Friday that uh, civil servants uh, who are in, uh, can be given an opportunity to put on the Chitenge as a way of promoting domestic tourism. And uh, our tour operators are willing to come up with a family weekend package so that uh, we can enhance participation by our uh, domestic tourists. And this also, I must call upon the Zambian people to develop interest in visiting our sites. 
Um, I was challenged. It's now that bars and nightclubs are closed. I was telling the tour operators, who said, Minister, look, we've created a family package probably of $50,000 to $600,000 per family per weekend. And that includes, includes meals. And then you find that uh, Zambians don't want, uh, a Zambian can go at, uh, he cited an example of Kabwata, there's that drinking place along Zik Chilimbolo's that run. It, over the weekend, you spend 5,000 kwach, and you still paying $100 as a family of three. It's expensive, $100 in a, by then the rate was at 15 kwach, it was coming to 1,500, 2,000 kwach now you will have uh, an, an opportunity to be in Kashuya National Park, in Mosotunia National Park, and Lower Zambez, South Wanga with your family, your wife plus the children. And that includes the driving, uh, the, the package for game viewing, and your meal. Uh, you will just pay $100. Um, but you find somebody over the weekend, you may spend uh, over 5,000 questions on uh, beer. And then they will say, no, it is expensive that uh, the tourism activities in Zambia are expensive. That's why I've been asking my friends from the ZTF. Maybe we have not marketed enough. We have not given information to the local people to say these packages, family packages have been negotiated and they are there. You can go and enjoy one police officer he, he who visited Kachua National Park with his family came and confessed and said, I just spent about $150. We had meals, they left on Friday, they came back on Sunday, they were a family of three. So he, he was telling me, if you compare the cost that we spend in Lusaka over the weekend and the experience and the refreshing, the interaction with nature, well, it's, well, it's more worth than staying in town. So it is just a message we need to send to Zambians to begin appreciating our nature. Morning, Lisa. Um, Danica from Zambia Daily Mail. Um, just wanted to find out, you know, plans that you have to use the film industry, as well as as the media, in terms of promoting and marketing the country. Because we have noticed that uh, well, the Southern uh, Rongo National Park and many others, uh, National Geographic, they just do tourism, and yet we do not produce documentaries. So I wanted just to find how we are collaborating. Also, with us, the media, even like us from the print, where I can do more feature articles as a way of marketing so that we go beyond uh, marketing only the Victoria Post. Thank you. Um, I, I have uh, spoken to my team, both as ATA in house and to the tourism and to the Department for Tourism, that uh, for us to drive um, domestic tourism. Culture and art must be our driving force because we use it as a catalyst for the promotion of domestic tourism. And media are a key because where I come from, we say, If you can't promote, if you can't talk about, then that thing will not go. So the, this is a, the blessing, the COVID 19 is a blessing in disguise for the ZTA to change their marketing strategy to engage more the domestic um, market by engaging local media houses. I have even gone to the extent of say, even community Excellent. radio station, private radio station, because Zambians are listening more to those. Let's engage them. Let's bring them on board so that they work as our agent of information responsible and the department responsible for tourism in my ministry will take it seriously. And more so let me also emphasize that the fund which takes in my aside. And by the way, eight million is sitting under the account of the of uh, the National Arts Council of Zambia, they are receiving application. They are scrutinizing. Film producers, you have an opportunity, craftsmen and women, you have an opportunity to improve on your content in, so that your production can be able to be shown locally and internationally. You can, it will be more exciting to see um, the producers applying for 
the COVID fund, meaning that has been set aside, the 30 million that has been set aside for the production of the, of, uh, the tourism sites. That will be a double benefit. You will have access to the fund after your film, uh, your documentary is produced with quality and content. That year will be able to buy it and promote it for you. Uh, um, and uh, you will promote it by attract advertising your content to domestic and international market. So the film producers, you have an opportunity to increase your feasibility by applying for this fund, which I believe before the end of this month, we must be, we must be able to launch the, the distribution of checks. I know that the, uh, the, the National Arts Council of Zambia, in collaboration with the CEC, uh, in the process of receiving applications and uh, scrutinizing uh, 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 the approval process. In short, the approval process, I've been seeing the adverts on the on ZNBC that the period is running up to 14th September. So we have an opportunity, my friends from the media, uh, those from the film industry, to apply and then uh, you seek authority from the ministry. I'll, I'll gladly grant you to enter the National Park for you to go and do documentaries that you can start promoting. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Honorable Minister. My name is Balewa from Radio Phoenix. Uh, I remember when you just came into this ministry, you sounded a warning on to the commission that looks up after these sites for tourism. And apparently, these past two weeks, I've been in different places just trying to find out if there's any development as to how they manage those um, tourist sites, like in Mumbai and many other places. And my conclusion was that uh, as a country, I think we have um, bad tenants in terms of how we look after these tourist sites. Now, is your ministry putting um, any amount aside to ensure that these tourist sites are well maintained to even attract a local person to go and uh, see these places because we can talk about domestic tourism but if I go and I find there's nothing that is so interesting I think that might not really uh, go well. I, I might not even promote it as much as I could if it is well maintained so in that regard what is your ministry doing to ensure that those places are well maintained and funding goes towards maintaining those uh, places thank you when you were speaking, you were reminding me of the days of late President Michael Chiruvia Sata with the correct Maplanga on ZNBC TV when they said, but why did you do this? He said, because of the portals that we don't need to send you to school, but to panel beat you. So that the portals, this I must state, I've spoken to the staff, and unfortunately, I'm a Christian. And the Bible tells me, if I promise a child that I'll whip you, I don't whip, then I'm a lie. I'm committing a sin. I've spoken to the team, and I think the action has started happening. Because we have a tendency in the public service where we think we need to have money for us to work. Yes, you may have money, but you, <laughs> I found a situation where, sorry, you are going for a program of marketing or maybe a program of investing in the heritage sites. You find the chief accountant is only in tourage. HR person is only in tourage. For what? And then money has come. Instead of that money working for the development of the site, it works for development of individual. At the end of the day, they will tell you we have no money, we can't develop. And I have said, sorry, it's not an insult. It's a statement I've been speaking to my staff each time in the management meeting. I tell them, don't tell me you have no money. Tell me you have no brain. Because if you have brains, you can attract funding. There are international communities who are involved in research. So some of our heritage sites are important components that if we had the serious civil servants, people who are dedicated to development, Obviously, somebody would be able to adopt in one buried and it is funded and it is maintained. But if we don't have a culture that appeals to the international community, I can tell you, I've sat in this ministry, there's been overwhelming 
desire by the international community in wanting to partner with the ministry investing in the national parks. We just, cabinet just approved an MOU with the American government. We signed an MOU with the British government. So uh, there's desire of people. And I have told my friends, I've said, all these people are coming. They have been able to bring in funding. But if it is a laissez fair attitude, which could not to a manapa kasu. Funding will come, 100 people will be on the entourage to go and visit Ngombe Ire. At the end of the day, 10 million, say, for example, a set Ngombe Ire. If 100 people go to visit, 99% of that fund will go for allowances and other things. And then 1%, you want to invest and expect things to grow. No, I have said, mindset change. If people can't change, you change the people. If people can't change, who will have no choice but to change the people. I have said, I will not be tired of creating changes until I find the right formula. If I am a wrong person, sorry, I have worked in the, uh, I told them, check your time out of the infrastructure. People are calling me a dead dreamer. Because when we announced the, the construction of top plazas, everybody thought it was an end of it will not happen. But uh, we are glad that we had the 100% support from His Excellency the President. So when we began on infrastructure development, people thought the infrastructure in Zambia were being funded by the Treasury. No, we attracted the private sector, brought in money. And they said, we can build you roads, you pay us after 17 years. We can do you flyover bridges, you pay us after 20 years. And, and that's how Zambia and His Excellency the President approved and supported us together with the cabinet. Well, that's how you've seen the development of infrastructure in Zambia today. There was no funding from the treasure. It's private people, international communities who came. That is the way we wanted to transform the Ministry of Tourism. As long as people are ready to accept and move and accept the challenges, we do. But if it is a less fair attitude, you report at work, I tell them, 08, you're in the office, 13 hours, you go for lunch, 12 hours, 14, you come back, 17 hours, you knock off, ask you for what you have done in that day, zero. 30 days every day you go to the office, ask you to account for action, zero. At the end of the day, you want a salary. And then you want to be ready to improve. It doesn't work that way. So that matter is a very serious matter. My staff knows and will not be tired of you until we find the right equation for betterment of Zambia. We must be ready and to save our country. And I want to assure you that sites, so are a catalyst for the promotion of tourism. Because a tourist would want to come and see how does Ngombe Rebe see, what do we have in our museums, what do we have in our waterfalls, what do we have in our national parks. That's why we have embarked on the robust program of wildlife restocking across all our national parks. If we don't have certain species in Kashu, who move from North Wanga to Kashu. If you don't have certain species in, in North Wanga, who move from Kashu to Lusenga National Park, so that across we can grow the tourism sector. Everybody then begins appreciating how the sector will start flourishing. I hope I have dealt with your question. It's mindset change, the people change of attitude and commitment to duty. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was our Honorable Minister making a very, very candid point there. Honorable Minister, at this juncture, I would like to invite uh, the Chairperson of the Tourism Council of Zambia, Mr. Mpoya, to give a vote of thanks. Mr. Mpoya, sir. Good morning. Chairman Mufoya, you are on mute. Please, can you unmute yourself? <laughs> yes. 
Good morning, Honorable Minister. Good morning, thank you. Um, uh, my apologies. I, I hope you are able to get me now. And uh, I, camera, my camera had uh, misbehaved. Uh, um, Please just increase your volume. You are too long. Thank you, Honorable Minister. My technician is is busy, as usual, trying to show me why I, he deserves a, a, a salary. <laughs> Is that okay? My apologies, sincere apologies. It happens like this whenever you want to uh, be ready, then you'll find something stands in between. My apologies once again. Honorable Minister, um, uh, the Permanent Secret Secretary President for Tourism and Arts, um, our colleagues from the Tourism Agency, uh, may I simply say all protocol observed. Honorable Minister, sir, having followed your address this morning, we, as a representative of the tourism sector in Zambia, are very delighted. Are very delighted to the fact that government, through you, have shown true leadership to try and salvage us in these difficult times. Sir, we've been hit badly. Like you have rightly said, we, in the tourism sector have been most affected. Families have gone in uh, serious uh, financial challenges. It, we did not expect this to happen so fast, but we are grateful that we have got a listening government through you. We hope, Honorable Minister, that the tourism sector COVID-19 safety protocol will impact positively into standard operating procedures being developed for various sectors. In, a, in particular, there is a critical need for further developing these guidelines into uh, travel, tourism, hospitality, subsectors. Other economic sectors SOPs that provide linkages with the travel and tourism and hospitality will then add value to the existing value chain of health and safety. Sir, so, uh, it is our wish and our prayer that at this stage we are moving towards uh, global authorities certification, as has been alluded by earlier speakers, that the World Travel and Tourism Council, WTTC, and the UNWTO, that UNWTO will finally endorse us as one of those top destinations that take uh, travel and tourism COVID-19 protocols to a very high level. So we can start receiving the much needed travelers who feel safe to come to our destination and leave the much needed foreign exchange so that our economy can start getting better. It is through these deep challenges that we can emerge as a very strong sector. And in observing that September is a month for the World Tourism Organization and our date being 27th September, we hope that in a few weeks time, we should be start smiling if we put all these, these plans into effective action. So I will be failing in my duties if I do not thank men and women 
or the uh, 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 technocrats at the ministry, at the tourism agency, in your office that have made this launch possible. And we are, the private sector, 100% willing and ready to make sure that its implementation is done without any delay. A good plan is as good as its implementation. With those few remarks, sir, allow me to thank you most sincerely and say may God Almighty continue blessing you as we keep our eyes and ears open to wait eagerly to hear the incentives that you have alluded to in your address. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister, and thank you very much, all the protocol observed once again. I thank you. Thank you very much. That was the chairperson for the Tourism Council of Zambia. Before we come to the end of our program, we would like again to invite the Honorable Minister for his uh, closing remarks and obviously to respond to the chairperson of TCZ, sir. Thank you. Um, I am grateful that we have successfully launched this you know, the COVID protocol. And I want to agree with you that a good document only becomes relevant if it is translated into actions and then it benefits people. I want to assure you that under my captainship in the ministry, the document will be translated and be, be actualized for the benefit of our tourists in Zambia. And thank you once again. And I want to just to appeal to all of us to, take, to be patriotic citizens by taking interest in knowing and singing the national anthem, standard by standard, all standards. Now, if he, your parents are failing to sing national anthem, what message are you passing on to your children? So be, be patriotic citizen. National anthem is one of the, identi the, 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 the symbols of identification in Zambia. The court of arms and national anthem, it tells us who we are, therefore, I want to appeal to all of us to take interest and be proud and patriotic citizen. Thank you once again. God bless you. God bless Zambia. And be a tourist. I am. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Guest of honor. Actually, that's a good challenge for the national anthem. We had prepared ourselves, so we don't know what happened along the way. So we were caught off balance. The music stopped playing, we were not ready, so you saw us jumble here and there, but uh, Honorable Minister, we can assure you that uh, we have taken note and uh, next time we'll do better. At this point, Honorable Minister, the Chairperson of the Zambia Tourism Agency, senior government officials, uh, members of the press, thank you very much for joining us this morning for the launch of the COVID-19 safety protocols for the Zambia tourism sector. And Honorable Minister, would like to assure you that the implementation process has already begun. Have a pleasant day and sir, keep safe also from COVID-19. Thank you very much.